We all know someone who is guilty. Someone who thinks recycling is just too hard. Someone who throws everything in the trash without a second thought. What is it about recycling that makes it so difficult? And what can we do to make it easier? Now I know everyone watching this is an all-star recycler, but not everybody is. Not everyone knows the difference between grocery bags and laundry detergent bottles. They're both plastic, but they're not both recyclable. It's these types of deceiving products that's causing frustration in people. Next time you see somebody incorrectly recycling something, like greasy pizza boxes or water bottles, instead of scolding them and making them feel bad, educate them. They're showing a wanting to participate, a willingness to recycle, which as we already know is ahead of millions of others. A common misconception amongst even the most enthusiastic recyclers is what does the recycling symbol actually mean? Does it mean that a product is recyclable? Or does it mean it's made from recycled products? Who exactly determines what products can carry this prestigious honor? The universal recycling symbol, or the Mobius Loop, is a symbol in the public domain that is unregulated and untrademarked. This means that anybody can use or alter it without fear of angering the recycling gods. Now, that's not to say that companies guilty of greenwashing won't be held accountable for false advertisements or claims, but this is the exact reason why people start to lose faith in the recycling practice. Because some companies say that products can be recycled when they can't, and there are some products that can be recycled even when they don't have the symbol. The number one most confusing thing about recycling is the changes in what materials can be accepted where. Picture this, you finally got through all the loops and hurdles at your office. You're an all-star recycler and you know exactly where everything goes. And sustainability coordinator Steve at the office has finally stopped giving you those looks. You know the ones. And after your long drive home from work, you pull into your driveway to see that your blue bin was not accepted. Apparently, you disposed of items that were not recyclable. But you know for a fact the sustainability Steve at the office told you that you could. Why are you playing games with me, Steve? Now, it's probably not Steve's fault. There are plenty of different companies that are responsible for picking up waste and recycling that sometimes the materials that are accepted in your home might not be accepted in the bin at work. The contents of your bin at home and your bin at work probably go to different recycling facilities where different materials are accepted. The possibilities for these types of things are actually quite endless and it's really infuriating for the consumers. The underlying issue here is the lack of standardization across the recycling industry. Different haulers, recycling centers, and municipalities all have different stipulations of what types of materials are accepted. This is an extremely flawed system that hurts everybody from the recycler all the way to the end manufacturer who's using these types of materials to manufacture their products. So what can we do about it? Educating yourself, your family, and your workplace on proper guidelines and principles of recycling at home or at work is a fantastic place to start. Just contact your local hauler or municipality and they'd be more than happy to tell you what items go where. Secondly, and seemingly counterintuitive, is when in doubt, just throw it out. The last thing a recycling facility needs is to be accepting materials that can't be processed. Lastly, and most importantly, is just reduce the amount of waste you're generating in the first place. Opt for litterless lunches, use less paper towel, buy products that have less packaging. By generating less waste in the first place, we're showing companies that we don't need flashy packaging. Vote with your wallet and say no to excessive packaging. By following these strategies and passing on all the recycling knowledge you have to anybody who will listen, we can begin to shift the focus to environmental sustainability and show regulators that the recycling industry needs standardization across the board. Let's stop blaming Sustainability Steve for the difficulty surrounding the recycling and start putting pressure on the local governments to make the changes necessary to make recycling simple again.